Well, good morning. This is Arduce and Sam with Cajun Couple Trucking. We are in Cleveland, Ohio at a, we're at a drop. We're delivering. So uh, we'll let you watch our intro. We'll be right back. Okay, let's see. Hopefully our mic's picking up today. <laughs> um, I'm watching it. It's, it's still green, so it should be good. Uh, anyway, uh, we picked up in... Where did we pick up in? Arkansas. Uh, Arkansas. Rogers. Rogers, Arkansas. <laughs> He's anyway, going to get in trouble. <laughs> some state trooper's going to see this and watch for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um... Actually, it is against the law, and we talked when we were in Arkansas years ago, um, going to the diamond fields uh, for our son for his birthday. Uh, I asked an officer, I said, is it true that you can be arrested for mispronouncing the state of Arkansas? And he looked at me. He got real serious. He looked at me and said, yes, sir, it is. Say it again. <laughs> One free shot, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> What I want to talk about today is uh, we've been seeing a lot of things on Facebook, on YouTube. Um, prime leasing is a scam. So I want to talk about it. This is probably a complete surprise to my wife because I didn't tell her what I want to talk about. It's been a little bit. We did get over our our cold and, and sinus infection and all. So we're doing a lot better now. Yes. And thank you, uh, everyone, for your concerns. And uh, we've noticed we've got uh, several new subscribers. Thank you very much for signing up. Uh, as always, you know, like, subscribe, and comment on YouTube. It helps us out. But anyway, let me put my chair a little bit further back. Um, there's a lot of things to the lease. And there's different options between the lease and the lease purchase. Okay. And we'll go in further into, we want to get into lease purchase and actually purchase some trucks and get drivers for them. That's probably about, what, four years, five years down the road? It's down the road. That's what we're looking at. Um, and there's varying success factors. So we'll talk about that in another uh, video. But uh, it's nice. Uh, sorry, I got a notification from... Uh, one of our group, Facebook groups we're in. Um, so what we're going to talk about here is the basic lease. The basic lease, uh, you are in charge of paying for your fuel. You're in charge of paying for the pre uh, preventive maintenance. You're in charge for paying for tires. You're in charge anything that's not covered by the warranty. You are in charge of. You are essentially, and I know people are going to gripe about this, but you're essentially an owner operator, except you don't own. Someone else owns it. The title's not in your name. It's leased out to you. Uh, so anything that's not covered by the warranty, you cover. And this is where a lot of people mess up is they think that I'm going to be making more money, which is true, but they think that Prime is going to fix anything that happens to the truck. No lease is going to do that. If you're renting the truck, they'll do that in most cases. Leasing is different. You are in charge of everything. And there's the problem is, and why people keep saying that it's a scam, is they don't read their lease. The lease is several pages. I want to say around 70, 80 pages. Nice little book. Yeah. But it even goes into, you know, after 18 months, how much it would cost for you to pay off the truck. Um, and yes, I know leasing says, oh no, you can't do that. You can't switch to a, a, um, a lease purchase. But according to the lease, the legality of the lease, uh, the legal parameters, they have to allow you to purchase the truck if you want to, if you have the money. The only thing that stipulates in the lease is you have to give them a month's notice that you want to pay the truck off. Same thing with the lease purchase. 
Now, it goes in, and if you read your lease, and honestly, you should never sign a legal document that you haven't read thoroughly. And if you don't understand, you need to ask someone who knows. Bring it to an attorney or talk to another lease operator who knows. Don't just skim down to the bottom and sign it. It's like any contract with mm -hmm. any company, any business. You're running a business. You have to know what you're signing. Right. And I would... I read my lease before I signed it. I and Terry on Tim Travels. Uh, and Terry, if you're watching this, thank you, man, because I did watch that breakdown of the lease video, of the lease, that video that you did. Um, and it helped me a lot. I still read through my lease to see if there was any changes or anything, but it was almost exactly the same. The only thing that changed was I want to say that the um, overage mileage went up like an eighth of a penny or something like that. Uh, but if y'all watch Tim Travels, you know, Terry, he he broke that. If nothing else you watch of his, watch that lease you know, video if you're thinking about leasing because he goes through it and he was an attorney. Um, so he knows. The legal jargon and reading the lease. I don't know. My wife didn't see it or didn't read it. No, uh, I don't think I even sent it to her an email before I signed it. But the lease is not in what most people call legal lease, it is plain, simple, broken down in layman's terms exactly everything. Now, people say it's a scam because you know. You're not making as much as, as Prime is. Or, you know, there's a many, many different reasons. But the main thing is, is the federal government, state governments, and county jurisdictions, they all say that a fair and legal um, contract is one that both parties have signed and agree is fair. If you don't read through it, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, say I'm selling, like, we have some land in Beaumont. And we've been trying to get rid of it since Hurricane Rita. I mean. 20 years ago. Right. And guy called me last night and said, how much do you want for it? I told him, just get it out of my name. Pay the back taxes and all because we signed it over to the city. After the hurricane, and they said we didn't have to worry about it. And 15 years later, pop back up. It popped back up, and we owe. I want to say it's like four thousand, five thousand dollars on back yeah, taxes. Yeah, something like it's that. Not much, <clears throat> but we don't want to have to deal with it because we're not going to go back and build on that little quarter acre of land. And all these developers want to put, um, what they say, an apartment building. Yeah, but our piece like of land that. is the last piece that they need. And so I told him, I said, get out of my name. You can have it for free. All right. That I agreed to. So it is fair to both parties because we're both getting something out of it. I'm getting that out of my name and he's getting to build an apartment. building. Uh, so he's going to check into it and all. But that's what I'm saying. Now, if. I decided I wanted to sell that little quarter acre because you're building an apartment building. I want to sell it for $37,000. Okay. I know what you want to do with it. I know I'm gouging you. But if you're willing to pay that and willing to sign a contract saying you're going to pay that, then you consider that fair. And that's what the courts will look at if you try to go in is you signed this lease saying it was fair. You didn't think it was a scam. There is nothing, nothing that we have come across at all that wasn't in the lease, including mm -hmm. it, it goes through breakdown pay. It goes through, you know, I mean, it doesn't go through detention pay because that's what prime, but it goes through breakdown pay. If you break down and you're down for more than 24 hours. It goes through a lot of things on this lease that, you know, um, you should know and you should read. 
It even lets you know that after a certain amount of time that you've been leasing, you get a, a week of forgiveness. Any week you want out of the year, you can call and say, you can call leasing and say, I want my forgiveness week this week. And you don't make a payment. That payment does not go to the back of your lease. That payment is just gone. Forgiven. Um, but they also stipulate you have to use it before a certain date. They also stipulate that after so many years of leasing, you'll get two forgiveness dates or weeks. And it also states that you have to use it by a certain date or you lose them if you can't save them up. That's a lot of money to lose, y'all. Yes, it is. So if you don't know about that, you ain't use that, you might it, want to check into that. Now, it only takes your truck payment. It doesn't take your APU payment. It doesn't take your um, permits. That's that's all still charged. It's but if you don't want that $1,000, I mean, you can shoot it our way. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. Get your forgiveness <laughs> week. Send us a check. <laughs> all right. We'll give you we'll give you our PayPal and our Venmo, man. Just, yeah, we'd enjoy that. Um, however, you you can say whatever you want to say, but legally it is not a scam if you sign that paperwork and it's in that paperwork. And there may be better leases out there. There may be worse leases out there. There are worse leases out there. There are definitely worse leases. There are definitely better leases. But it's a lease that you sign and you choose. And for a lot of start out people who don't have, you know, you just came to this company. You didn't have a CDL. You you know, they helped you get and, started. And your credit. That's a great lease for someone who doesn't have yeah. to put it on their own credit and their own. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah it's you, not. You try to, you, here's the thing, and, and I've looked into it, um, with a 650 credit score, okay, which they say is about average, all right, 650 credit score, you'd have to put about twenty to $30,000 down on a brand new freight line, okay, and then your payments will be about four to five grand a month for six years. You can extend it further than six years, but you're not going to, you know, and this is like Freightliner financing. You're not going to pay it off before Prime says truck's too old. And then all the repairs that you're going to have to pay during that time. Right. For that all long maintenance lease. maintenance and everything. I mean. And that's that's buying out right. You can buy it outright, bring it somewhere else. It's fine. This lease is three years, about a, on the truck itself, about a thousand dollars a week. And if you work with your team, your fleet manager, your payroll person, you know, and you get with your team, they have a program already set up that has helped. Many, many, many people purchase their own trucks, get through the lease successfully enough. It's whenever you start denying loads over and over again, uh, expecting 250 per mile and doing all this that if you're waiting for that, you're not going to make money. You're barely going to make your truck payment. If you're broke down, that breakdown pay is designed that you can pay your fixed costs Plus have enough money for food for a week for one person. It's not eating out. It's purchasing your food and cooking it. Um, you'll probably get about 125 to 150 dollars a week if you're broken down for a month. The rest of that's going to go towards your fixed costs um, on your breakdown pay. So you're not paying your bills. No. You're not having any <clears throat> extra money if you're broke down. No. But. It aggravates me. People coming out and saying, "Oh, it's a scam! It's a scam!" Because because you didn't read your lease, or because you didn't have business sense to follow a financial plan to save up money for those bad weeks. Yeah, it doesn't mean that it's a scam. No, and we by design. 
we are going and just a note we will be documenting the turning this truck in in about yes, two weeks in two weeks yeah on april 1st okay. we have to be at springfield our truck will be ready according to leasing on or before april 8th and but this truck because it's four years old needs to be in on april 1st so they can check it in by april 8th because april 8th is when the warranty runs out so we'll be in the hotel for about a week yeah our plan is we're going to come in on april 1st we're going to schedule the inspection for april 3rd or 4th we've already cleared that with leasing we can call and schedule our inspection uh with the uh, mechanic bay and that'll give us time to get into the hotel room get everything out of the truck clean it up and bring it in uh now we plan on documenting it if they let us record it, we're probably going to record it on my wife's phone because I need my phone for the pictures. Because they will be going through and there were several paint chips that I took pictures of. So we're, I'm going to have to show pictures uh, if I don't want to have to pay for it. As we don't far want as to have to pay the for it. inside, <laughs> and there could have been a few things on the outside I missed, but according, as, long, as far as the inside, we pretty much clean and armor all everything every week. So as far as the there be some form of damage. Yeah, there was. Yes, I did not. I don't think I took a picture of. And this was already damaged when I got the truck. I didn't think about it. There were things I didn't think about. It. First time. But they're not going to have to do de a lot of detailing inside the truck. That's why I'm getting. It. Everything is pretty much clean as it is. They probably have to spend thirty minutes to an hour in here. And and. Right just now, know whenever like we pull is. everything out, we'll deep clean as we go, too. Right. I We're mean, even going to pull the tray that the icebox sits on and clean underneath it. We're yeah. not people who like, we don't like people coming up behind us. No, we'll they, clean it up. If they want to, if they want to clean the inside of this truck, they're going to have to mess it up. <laughs> and there's going to be pictures of it being clean and shiny. And, all. Um, and we'll probably take a video of what we did. But back on the subject, guys, girls, you know, I'm not going to go through the list page by page like what Terry did. Uh, if you want to watch that, it's, it's a YouTuber. I'm not going to read what he did because he did an excellent job on it. Um, it's Tim Travels, and it is, you know. You've got it labeled lease, you know, lease breakdown. Yeah. I've watched it, too. Really good lease breakdown. It is. And it goes over everything uh, and tells you what it means. You know? So don't reinvent the wheel no. when you don't have to? No, we don't like doing nah. that. Nah. We'll just tell now, you where to go. When we get to the lease purchase, we may break that down. May. You know? um, but there's not many differences. The differences basically are, um, as far as I've been told by other drivers who have done the lease purchase, um, there's no tire fund set aside. You have to do that with your emergency fund. And there uh, is still an excess mileage. Uh, and you don't get breakdown pay. And you get, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah. Um, if you do break down and there's an expense, uh, let's just go with what that guy did. Um, he never checked his oil. He froze his engine. And it cost, I think it was like $28,000 to rebuild the engine. The guy just up and quit. He's like, no, no, this, your lease was a scam. You know, I shouldn't have had to, you know, check the oil. If you want the oil checked daily, you hire a mechanic and have him sit in that seat over there. <laughs> and you pay. It's your truck. Well, Yo. at that point, you got to pay for that. And if you had to pay for that on a standard lease, they could break it up. Talking with your fleet manager, they could break it up between 10 weeks. With a lease purchase, there is no breaking it up. You can pay for it. So before you get into a lease purchase, you may not only need to have $14,000 down, but a smart business person. I was going to say smart man. <laughs> the smart business person is going to have enough 
to be able to do the major work, like an engine rebuild, and be able to sit for that month because with the lease purchase, you don't get the loaner program. With the lease, if you burn up your engine, it's whether it's covered by warranty or not, you're going to be out for a month. Leasing will let you borrow another truck. Now, of course, you're going to have to pay for them to detail it and all after you get done with it. There's, there's, and you have to pay for any damages that you did. There's always cost incurred. Right. But you can still make your truck payments. And you can still get some income to pay towards that damaged truck that you got to pay for. So, um, anything you would like to add? Like anything, it's a business. Just, you know, make smart decisions, talk to people, talk to more people to make sure the first people didn't lie to you. You know, I mean, you just got to do your research. It's it's not for everybody. Company is so much better for some people who just don't want to expend the time it takes to business manage. Because it's not an easy process. And you have to day after day after day go through your finances, go through your your deductions, see where your money's going, you know, and try to make your business more profitable. If that's not something you want to do, you just want to drive, company works, you know. And to, to expand on that, if you expect a paycheck about this much every you shouldn't be loose. No. If you need seven hundred dollars a week, you shouldn't be loose. If you need a thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars a week, you should not be loose. Here's the reason. Things happen. You break down, you do you know, there's no guaranteed pay. There's been two weeks since we've been here that we were negative. Yep. Pulled out of our out of our um emergency fund just to stay positive. Uh we have bad weeks. We have really, really good weeks. There's several weeks we've netted over three thousand dollars on a solo because she doesn't drive yet. No. Nope. Um, and when she does drive, she's just going to do three to five hours a day. Yeah, we'll talk so, about that later. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't have a business mind, don't get into this. And, I and if you don't you, enjoy saving your money. Yes. If you like, just have to spend everything you get every week. Don't do this. No. You're not gonna be able to be profitable that way because yes. oh, I got a three thousand dollar paycheck. Let me go spend it all, and then next week I'm negative fifty dollars. And you can't even afford food because you didn't yeah. plan ahead. And you don't have control. And you don't know how many drivers, or you probably do know how many drivers out there. We just don't have you. food. Yeah. And the thing about it is, is not only in that case, but you got to look at it too. There's a lot of people out there saying, oh, you, you're you not a business. You're not, you know, yeah, you, you ordered an LLC for nothing. You did this, you did that. You know, you don't, you don't understand the rigors and the, you have to pay insurance. You have to do this. You have to do this. You have to do this. The thing is, is Prime's leasing business model. It's one that takes a lot of the administrative headaches off of you. And sometimes you pay a little bit more yeah. for people the, to have those headaches taken right. away. For instance, you pay Prime 28% of the load. You keep 72% of the load. That 28% goes to paying your team. And your team is your fleet manager who dispatches you. Okay? You got your sales team. They are your brokers. They broker everything for you, so you don't have to worry about that. They take care of your payroll. Uh, your payroll. They they take care of your uh, factoring. That's the word I was thinking. Factoring, because imagine you did a load for twenty five hundred dollars. Okay, it's great. Friday, you know you're going to get paid for that load. Well, if Prime didn't do the factoring. You wouldn't get that money for 60 to 90 days. That's how this industry works. Okay. Then you have your road assist, which is basically 
your emergency contact for when something happens with the trailer or the truck, right? And here's another thing I want to touch on today. We've seen a lot of people saying, oh, I don't bring any anything that's wrong with the trailer. I don't bring it. I just finish my load and drop it. Here's the problem with that. It's Prime's property, correct. Prime does have to fix everything on it, correct. Prime does have to pay for the tires. You don't pay for anything to do with the trailer. Wash out anything, right? Here's your problem. You run through a scale. They find that chunk out of the tire on the trailer. They find the trailer brakes don't have enough friction material. They're not engaging. They find leaking airlines. All this stuff that you decided to avoid whenever you you made your inspection before you picked up the trailer. Now you're shut down on it. It goes on your DAC. It goes on your uh, motor vehicle safety record. This all goes on you. Prime tries to pay to fix it, but why didn't you just either tell them this trailer is not acceptable? I'm not taking this trailer. You need to get it fixed. Or tell Road Assist. This trailer needs this, 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 and this done. Where can I bring it? And then have them, who the snow turned into sleep. <laughs> um, and then have them send you to a shop. And then you can talk to your fleet manager or sales and tell them, we need to push this back because this is going to take time. And if your fleet manager says no, then you can tell them, then take me off of it and put a team on it because I'm not going to make it. You should not be charged with a service failure because of equipment malfunction on the trailer. Equipment malfunction on your truck, possibly mm -hmm. depending on what it is. That was you. But on your trailer, no, you shouldn't be. And they have processes in line for that. That's what your team is paid for. It's what your team is there for. Your team also, you can contact payroll and that young lady or young man will be glad to help you figure out where your money's going, help you figure out how to save, help you figure out a way that you can be profitable. Okay? It's, it, I mean, if you're not profitable, you're not going right. to keep going, and they're not going to get paid because, and, you know, they, and, it helps them to help you. Yeah. And to all these people that say you're not an owner-operator, you're not a you don't run your own business because you don't have all these headaches. That time puts a team in place to help you with that. Then I would like to ask him a question. How do you think do you think Donald Trump writes a check to every single employee he has? Do you think Donald Trump pays his taxes personally? Do you think Donald Trump uh, does anything other than what he needs to do to direct his company? That's what you're doing in your place. You're driving your truck. You're directing your company. And all these people that are getting paid that, what's that you're paying in that 28%. That works for you. And, well, they, they work, work with you. With you. Um, because you're not their boss. You can't fire them. No. But they work with you to make sure you're profitable. And that's what Donald Trump does. He hires people. He hires services. He puts people in places. You think if he owned a trucking company, he'd be dispatching every single load? No. <clears throat> so. Kudos to you, those of you who do, though. That's yes, a lot of extra work. It's a lot of extra work, but if you're still paying Prime that 28% or whatever company you're at, that 28% or that 20%, you're paying for someone to do a job that you took the job off of them. You're just paying them for sitting down doing that. Let them work. Make them work. Have them do things that need to be done. Um, and Get so the most out you, of your money. You are running a business. You need to act like it's a business. If you listen to these clowns that say it, you're not running a business, can you start treating it as a paycheck? Please either drive company or drive for one of these lease operators that owns trucks that is going to well, have a micro fleet. Yeah. Because you're not going to succeed. You can spend every penny you got in. You can spend. You can spend more money than what you got. You're not going to get a steady paycheck. One week is going to be twenty-seven hundred dollars. Next week is going to be thirteen hundred. Next week is going to be 
might be 3,000 next week. It might be 500. You don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. And these break them. As a company driver, you get so many cents per mile. So, I mean, you, company drivers run an average of 24 to 2,700 miles a week. So you can figure out about what you would get paid. Yes, they can't refuse loads. I understand it's a big draw for lease operators. They can refuse loads. But if you're refusing loads all the time, you're not making money anyway. For instance, Thursday on Prime Uncensored, people started refusing loads. The same people are still sitting, still griping, still complaining. If they don't have a load, it's Monday. And they're dispatching Tuesday loads. So, where are they? I mean, the, the people who refused, I, I mean, I gotta say thank you because we got our load that we're picking up today and delivering tomorrow for a good amount of money, about three and a half, four dollars per mile. Y'all refused that because you didn't want to wait till Monday. So, thank you, whoever did that. You know, we're getting the cheese load from Ohio to Virginia and get paid. Nice for it, and it gets added to this week's paycheck. So we'll take it. We'll take it every <laughs> single time. But if you are the kind of person that's going to do that, you really need to drive the company. It's the only way you're going to be happy. You're going to be stress free, um, and you're you're going to make a basic weekly payment. And if you break down, there's a guarantee. Every week that you get paid, if you drive for a, if you drive for a fleet owner, and it's more than if you drive for a company, you know, for a prime. So everything has its advantages and disadvantages. That's why we are saying research, see what's best for you, because what's best for us is not best for everybody. If no. you, everybody's got a different amount of work they want to put into this. And, and some people to be successful, they need to make, they need to net $2,000 a week. And they need to be able to put up $500 in their savings account. Some people to be successful, and successful is relative. You gauge your own success. Some people like us to be successful means we can pay all our bills. And if we want to go see a movie, we can hire a new movie and see a movie. We are not you know, trying to make a million dollars out here. We're just trying to enjoy our life. And we save, and I promise you, we're, you know, we don't have to if, double if, think, no. you know, to go get food or things like that. We're good. Yeah, if we but, wanted to, we could shut down for a month and be happy. But we, or two. But we're just trying to, you know, live within our means and save up and enjoy retirement at some point. But yep. right now and, it's a pre-retirement. Right. And <laughs> when we get in the new truck in April, we're shifting gears. We're going to be saving more. We're going to be doing more. We're going to be um, not touching our emergency fund as often. We're going to be building up our savings, building up our um, our business account. We're going to be doing all this because at the end of that three years, we want to purchase our next truck. We're going to at least purchase, but we also want to purchase two to three more trucks so that we can get a mini fleet. And we want to purchase those outright. They'll probably be used trucks off of um, pedigree lot, but it's something that we want to do to start our. And if we're going to stay in that gear until we hit our fifth or sixth truck, then we're going to relax a little bit. But we want, as we've always said from the beginning, we want in, in about six to ten years, we want to have about six to ten trucks. In about fifteen years, we want to have ten, ten to twelve, ten to fifteen trucks on the road. That way, when we decide we want to do something, we're going to do it. And at some point during this year, we're going to try to ask our fleet manager to stop Florida and have us head over. Disney for a few days. So it'll be nice change to go with no kids. 
and just go visit the world place that has like the different sections of the country, like different countries. What was that? I forgot. We went with the kids, but we really couldn't explore much because I was afraid they'd break things. <laughs> so, um, in my opinion, this lease is not a scam. There is no double talk, no legalese. It's all in layman's terms. It all lays everything out. Everything that I've done with them has been right on with that lease. Like, for instance, and this might be our paperwork coming. For instance, um, we had our DPF filter. Most people who lease trucks don't have to do that because that's at 5,000 miles. We had to do our DPF filter and our DEF filter. They replaced the DEF and they cleaned the DPF filter. All right. That normally is a very big expense. In the lease, it states that anything that has a wear, your tires, your brake pads, your brake shoes, your DPF filter, and all that, if you have to get it done while you're leasing, they've already measured those things and they prorate them. And in your, you want to pull up the service records. In the service records, it tells you how much wear was on these things. You can call the um, shop in Springfield. They can pull up your truck number and they can tell you how much wear was on them when you got the truck. They do prorate. For our DPF filter cleaning and DEF filter change and, and the labor for it paid $128. And it was over twelve hundred before the actual deduction for the pro rate. Right. The pro rate took off over a thousand dollars, which was amazing. That was amazing itself. Because you know what they <clears throat> prorated to? The labor. The labor's ninety five dollars an hour, mm -hmm. and they prorated the labor. All that. What I didn't have to pay. Leasing still had to pay, but they took it out of that. Um, the fund that the previous driver had for his lease completion. That's why if you don't complete a lease, you don't get a penny of that. Okay. You don't get your tire fund back because that's part of that. The only thing you put in that lease completion bonus is the tire fund. That's it. Everything else, half of it's done by leasing, half of it's done by prime. Okay, so when you look in your progress, you see at least completion bonus. That's before the tire fund. If you stop a lease before the end, you lose that money, which is a bonus, and you lose the tire fund because they save that to go towards any of the proration that they need to pay for for the next driver. Just keep that in mind because we picked this short-term lease so we can get in a truck we wanted but we designed this part where we set up the truck that way when we moved everything we had everything we needed i mean i got me a nice <laughs> coming out. got me a nice radio i'm gonna strap that back in got a nice fridge for those who don't nice... know it's a cd radio not a regular radio <laughs> that dude is in a freaking skirt full on beard in a skirt well he that that and actually blouse. no that actually looks like a tablecloth wrapped around him. That doesn't look like a skirt. It's that like is, a wrap. That is a skirt. Look at this side. And somebody watching you could be in a skirt too. So I'm be sorry. nice. I'm sorry. But anyway, we got everything already bought for the truck. We've got everything ready to go. I don't have to spend all that. So we don't have to spend that couple thousand dollars that we did last year with the new truck. We don't have to spend a lot of the stuff that I'm sorry. What I don't agree with is the cross. Those look more like slippers. And he's brushing his teeth too while he's walking. And and he was closing his doors. It's a different company, baby. It, it is. Don't it let is. it bother you. All right. 
Get anyway. back on track. <laughs> he gets easily distracted by things that happen. Yes. Or people that walk out of trucks not appropriately dressed for where you're delivering, like in Crocs, or looking like you have a tablecloth wrapped around your waist. That was not a stirred by the way. That was like a tablecloth. And brushing your teeth, walking through the parking lot. Things like that distract him just because it's not very professional. It's like the guy last night who parked in front of the maintenance base the 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 mechanic base at the Loves walked in and took a shower. He was in there so long. Me, he walked in with me and my wife. Me and my wife took our shower, walked back out to the truck, got our stuff, went back in, and was eating supper. And they were still calling for him. So I went up and I told him, "Say, hey, that dude ordered a shower whenever he came in." And they had already called him like four or five times. He said, it's okay, the police are on their way, and if he doesn't move his truck before the police get here, they're towing him. And they did tow him. So, but anyway. He all three. All three bays. Bays to where they couldn't get, get trucks it. in and out to work on them. I mean, right. it was hindering business. Yes. I mean, I totally understand parking sometimes a little bit out of a parking spot whenever there's no parking spot. But there was probably about 10 parking spots left. And he, just he didn't want to chose back. to park in front of the Love mechanic Bay shop. for the mechanic shop and block yeah. all three of their bays. So we got a little off. Yeah, a and little we off a little subject. Long. We got a little off subject. In any case, we've both seen Terry's video. Um, we have, I have read the lease. My wife has witnessed me talking with Lisa and getting things fixed on the truck you know, as we we're going. We, she has witnessed everything that they have said. True. There has been no lies, no hiding of information, no, no removal of fees or anything like that associated with our lease. So I have to say that prime leasing is on the up and up. It's not a scam. I wouldn't be a part of it if it was a scam. I wouldn't be endorsing it if it was a scam. But anything, everything is perception. How do you perceive it? If you feel it's a scam, then to you it's a scam. It is not a it. real scam. Yeah, don't you know, sign but something don't you sign. don't trust in. You no, know, what I believe is a scam, I'll give you an example, for instance. What I believe is a scam is these companies that will take you, tell you we're going to train you to be a truck driver and we're going to put you in your own truck. They take you, they bring you out with a trainer for two weeks, bring you back in the terminal, have you take a test. You pass the test, they put you straight in a truck by yourself. And say you're on probation for 90 days. They did not set you up to to succeed. They set you up to fail. They know you're going to damage equipment. And they know that they can put it on your DAC. And they know they can trap you with that company. And they know that you can't go anywhere else because of your DAC and your safety scores. So if you want to go anywhere else, unless you can find a little mom and pop shop that will hire you, you're stuck with them. Until this clears up, which is years. Okay, years. Those companies are a scam. They're doing anything they can to bring people in. They're not giving you the information you need. They're not properly teaching you. And Prime has systems set in place. You have, yes, you have to go 50,000 miles to the trainer. That's so you can make sure they can make sure that you're safe and you can get the experience you want. Within that 50,000 miles, you usually get start getting the frustration that a truck driver feels on a daily basis. And you need to learn how to cope with that. That's what your trainer is there to help you do. One of the things he's there to help you do. Okay. Number two, they have lots and lots of classes. Anytime you go into a terminal, ask them what classes are going on. I bet you they can get you in some. 
that's going to teach you something. It's going to make you a better driver, make you a better lease operator, make you a better owner operator. They are trying to help you succeed where other companies don't care. Um, and I'm not going to go into what companies, but mm -hmm. I can tell you there's a lot of them out there. Yep. Do your research. If you're the kind of person that just wants to make mistakes and learn on your own, Prime's probably not for you. I'm just saying. They're going to offer you lots of resources that you're not going to want to take. And so uh, if you come to this industry think you know it all from the very beginning, well, keep watching our channel because we're going to be here long after you've left the industry. Um, because I did this in the nineties. I had three uncles who drove trucks. I got a lot of wisdom from them before they passed on. I, um, I like to talk to drivers. I like to learn things. And I know that I am far, far from knowing everything there is about this industry, but I do have a lot of knowledge and I try to build on that knowledge daily. And, um, if you are running a business, if you're out here, if you're running a truck, because basically, even if you're a company driver, they don't tell you when to get up. They don't tell you when to drive. They don't tell you how many hours to drive. They, they don't tell you anything. It's basically, go pick this up and get it here. By this day, by this time. Mm -hmm. And you got to right. figure out the rest. Right. If you need help, you can call logs. They can help you. If you need help, my phone number, text me, is in in the description. I always put it in the description. You know, I'll be glad to help you. My wife will be glad to help you. If you need help, that's what we're here for. We like to help. And if we don't know the answer, we'll find the answer. The thing is, though, if you're one that cannot, cannot take criticism, cannot take instruction, cannot take, you know, help, then I wouldn't advise trucking this for you. Is, is or if you don't have time management, yeah, some That's people just one. can't time manage. Yeah, and so I mean, we got to manage our time. People think that we're free and, and living the life out here, but honestly, when you drive ten hours a day, right, you got to stop for fuel, you got to stop for restroom breaks, you got to stop for thirty minutes. Okay, so usually. If you start at three o'clock in the morning, usually if you've hustled and really driven and limited everything, you usually stop around two p.m. Okay, that's eleven hours. It leaves you thirteen hours left in the day, eight hours of sleep. Right, it leaves you five hours to get your shower, get your meal, check your truck because you got to check your truck before and after every haul or every day. After you drive, you know, when you break it down to everything that we have to do, by the time you eat, take your shower, and get back in your truck to get to sleep, you got about six or seven hours left that you can sleep. If you can't manage your time, you get in the truck stop, you lose track of time, you're in there for five hours, you're sleeping for two to three hours. And Especially then get if you get lost road. visiting. We've done that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or if you see some shops near where you're at that you just have to go check out. Yeah. <laughs> and there have been a few times where I'm exhausted. I will sleep. My wife will go. She comes back with 16, 20 bags of you know, items and stuff. So. Well, somebody has to like fill up the truck. Yes. With my job. With food and stuff. That's what she usually gets, you know. Or she'll uh, replace our, our bedding. Or and, toiletries or whatever. Yeah. The necessities. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, and grandkid stuff. Yes, that too. <laughs> but uh, I think we've gone on long enough. I know this video is going to be really long. It's going to be about an hour long. So uh, we'll end it here. If you have any questions about leasing, any questions about um driving trucks, any questions about the trucking industry at all, please feel free to either text it to me, and when we stop, we'll answer it, or email it, and I don't check my email as often as I do my text, 
just to let you know. And or um, leave a comment. Leave a comment. And we'll be glad we'll to check those. Just, always, we check the comments several times a day. She checks while I'm driving. I check when we stop. Um, so as always, like, subscribe, leave a comment, um, share, share it. That helps too. And keep your shiny side up, your rubber side down, and your bears between the ditches. Catch you on the flip side. I don't know. Look. Hello.